Cadillac Customer Care. Yes, hello. I have the new 2021 Escalade. Oh, how are you liking it? Yeah, no, I'm enjoying it very much. Um, except I have the augmented reality running very often, and you know how it has the little arrows that go over where you turn and then the little pin to tell you where your destination is? Yes. Well, it keeps disappearing before I can get there. It should only disappear when you arrive. Yeah, no, no, I know, but like it's, it's almost like someone's taking it or something. Sorry, I... that's impossible. The pin is digital. Who is that guy? Sir? I recognize him. Hello? Oh, my God. I think he's gonna take the pin. Sir, nobody can take the pin. He's he took it from. He took it right from the sky. It's not. It's, sir, sir, please don't attack members of the public. Sir. Hey. Get back here. I have kids to feed. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James! And this is the 2021 Cadillac Escalade. This year, the Escalade is all new. So now, for its fifth generation, it has the tech to back up its road presence. Cadillac hasn't exactly reinvented the big SUV formula here. What they've done is double down on what makes it so desirable. But this one costs $122,000 Canadian, which puts it in very competitive territory. So we borrowed it from Finch Chevrolet from our friend Morgan Crosby of Cars and Crosby fame to see if it deserves the six-figure sum it commands. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. Today we're experiencing the Escalade in its natural habitat. City traffic. News for 2021 is you can get a turbo diesel. Today, we're in the 6.2 litre monstrous V8. 420 horsepower and 468 pound-feet of torque. It's not that fast. And this is the ESV, so it's the bigger bastard. 6,000 pounds, it's heavier than last year, which means it's actually a little bit slower than last year. 6.1 seconds to 60 instead of 5.9. That's not really the identifier of this car. It's just pure mass. But in the same way that Zoolander wondered if there was more to life than being really, really, really ridiculously good looking, we felt there must be more to the Cadillac's $90,000 Canadian starting price than just mass. We're in a place called London. London, Canada, but London. And the Canadians have the antlers to call this river behind me the River Thames. Not sure how I feel about that. I'm also not sure how I feel about the Cadillac Escalade. Because for the same money, the BMW X7 and the Mercedes GLS drive better. For way less money, you can get the same platform in the GMC Yukon and the Chevy Tahoe. And if you go the Ford side of things, we've driven the Lincoln Navigator, which is also a big executive American luxury boat. So why, for the money, would you buy a Cadillac Escalade? Reason is, it's a statement. Because in here, I'm king of the road. Every car looks tiny, even the SUVs and trucks. And I have a very aggressive grille on the front that perfectly executes the Escala concept. But street presence is not the only reason you get the 2021 Escalade. The stuff in front of me is insane. But right now I have a high quality augmented reality screen right in front of me. Mercedes do it just to the right of you, which doesn't make much sense. I don't even need to look through the window. I'm putting a lot of trust in the screen right now. And if something comes up too closely, it does that classic Cadillac move that we discovered in the CT6 and it vibrates my bottom in a not so unpleasant way. Huh? Right, here we are chugging up a hill. Come on. 
<laughs> that's very obviously a pushrod V8. That's the difference between a V8 in this and a V8 in, say, an X5 or an X7, is that those are very smooth and rev higher and are turbocharged. This relies on good old-fashioned American displacement to make its power. <laughs> it's a bit coarse. But it sounds good. It sounds good because I like the sound of a Corvette engine, though, not because it sounds good for a big luxury truck. But I mean, if that's what you're into, this is, it does that. It feels American. So this no longer has a solid rear axle. It is still a body on frame truck, but now we have independent rear suspension. It's currently allowing the rear end to kind of settle over bumps in a way it didn't before, where you'd get this kind of back and forth truckness in the rear. Don't have that. I will say though that even with the magnetic ride suspension, it's still kind of stiff and there's a lot of vibrations coming through. It's not the most smooth, luxurious ride in an SUV I've ever been in. This does have the 10 speed transmission and it has the optional four wheel drive. Right now it's in rear wheel drive form. Now, you know, save fuel and obviously we don't need it. But this does have the ability to tow a very large thing. Whether or not you're buying your Escalade to tow an Airstream, I'm not sure if that's the case, but let's be honest. You get an Escalade because you want an Escalade. Look at it. It's ridiculous. It's huge. In fact, to show you just how huge, I waved over our camera car to make a quick comparison. Let me explain. This is our 4Runner. It's a V8, four-wheel drive. It's big. We use it to tow the Throttle House race car. And this is the new Escalade. See what I mean? It needs to be said though, that when I close my eyes, okay, don't do that. Uh, it feels like an American truck. It's got the same kind of V8 noise. It's not ultra refined. It's not the quietest SUV I've ever been in. But when I open my eyes, and I look in front of me and I see this and I see what it looks like on the outside with the design and the lights and the LEDs. And I would say that they're genuinely concerning the Germans right now. So the new Escalade is certainly truck-like, but it is no truck in a good way. The, the roll is, is truck-like, but the steering is actually very sharp. They've made it far more car-like than, I say, an F-150. And that's also true for the braking. Sam so on the brakes. The vehicle doesn't pitch the way I expect it to. It stays very flat. I'm aware of how giant it is, but plenty of control. Yeah, a bit of roll, but great torque and perfect control when braking. Very easy to drive. James is right. While the ride is a bit stiff, the magneto real logical dampers allow for a lot of confidence. Hmm, confidence. Not a thing it gives off when using the automatic parking assist, though. Okay, let's see if we can do it. Come on. Okay, there's a car behind me who's very, very, two cars. One of them's a Nissan Titan, and they're being very impatient because this is too slow. And it's, it's locked me out of my brake and my throttle now. Put it, no, canceled. Okay, we're just gonna get, we're just gonna give up on this. So that is not quite ready for a vehicle this size, that tech apparently. And uh, back to the road. The 2021 Escalade does drive quite well, even if it's not as luxurious as we would have hoped. Thankfully, even though an X7 drives better, at least the Escalade has more, well, more of everything. Ooh, got my running boards. That is the smoothest I've seen you exit a car. Yeah, maybe I need a vehicle like this. With the running boards, For they're two bad, grand extra though. Bad neck and bad back. Yeah, because yeah. you're an old man. Two grand? Two grand, yeah. That's actually okay because they light up along the side. Everything lights up. Yeah, everything. Like that little Cadillac symbol right there lights up. These like these lights here and the rear lights, they do like a light show when you walk up. Every day is Christmas with a Cadillac Escalade. <laughs> that should be their slogan. I'm sure it is. It will be next to Macy's yeah. with all the most American stuff ever. 
But I love this design, actually. Uh, even down to way, the way the lights cut through the trim. Yep, they and go just right carry through. on. They're just constantly flowing. This is a giant grill, and it hasn't got the chintzy silver lines from the last generation. This I think it's almost as big as the grill in the new 4 Series. <laughs> the size, this, no, it's not the size, it's the ex it's how you use it. Yeah, exactly. And BMW have not used it correctly, no. which has left space for the American SUVs to look the best. Look at this. This is how you do a big grill. And you were saying you can get these in chrome still, right? Oh, you like, can? Yeah, you can actually. You, they used to come in chrome and they were a little but bit But this chintzy. is black because of the sport? This is the sport. And this has the Onyx package. Onyx pack, 5,000 bucks. 5,000 bucks. Yeah. The wheels and the black line running on the side and some other stuff as well. Oh, well, this is also an expensive white. This is the tri-coat crystal, $1,400 or so. There's a little bit of metal flake in it though. Metal like, flake. Look it, at this. It offsets the black perfectly. Look at this. Yeah. I'm gone now. No, me too. Speaking of offsets. Yes. Oh, yeah. There's a shark fin that's just not quite centered. What's it doing over there? And once you notice it, you can't not notice it's it. It's like the driver's got a mohawk. It's, yeah. just, it's a strange placement for that. I'm not sure about that. Listen, I really like the look of this. This is the first Escalade I, I, I like the look of. You know what? I agree with that. Before, it was just like, oh, it's, God. This is imposing with some sense of, like, grandeur. Yeah. That, that's not... It's not like... I, there's a word I want to say, and I can't say them. It, it, is it, is it a, 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 a pinky finger ring because that's what the previous like a big gold pinky, pinky, finger, pinky ring. finger ring that's what the previous escalator I'm glad was. I didn't wear that today yeah <laughs> but yeah beyond that though I think be, oh, sorry beyond the front and the design and these giant 22 inch wheels which are awesome with the Cadillac symbol it doesn't look that different to like at first glance to what the Lincoln Navigator we had which was also white no it right? doesn't but where it's massively different it's on the inside it's the inside which is one of the main reasons you get this instead of that Huge. Huge. What's that noise? That's what? the sound of the sideboards coming in. Oh, yeah. It's like, it feels, it's like the wheels on an aircraft. Yeah, going yeah. Up, it's right? the same sound. Well, it, this <laughs> might as well be a Boeing because it's huge. <laughs> yeah, it's right. But we've got lots of brown going on here with this trim. Mm -hmm. Dark brown, tan. And some gloss polished, wood. Varnished. I will say that wood, polished wood, is very 2015. I feel like we're in an open pour era we right are. now. We are. The Lincoln Navigator had open pour. Yes, and, and it made all the difference in the world, yeah. Also, the Lincoln Navigator, even though it didn't have the tech we're about to talk about, it did have some fancy tricks up its sleeve. It had a floating center console, if you remember that. I do, and I will say that this, this is, little this is section, not floating. This is not floating. Stationary. Yeah. It's stationary. This whole area right here is about the lowest point of the interior, phys physically and Phys physically. Yeah, and also it is not the nicest part. That's where the Germans went out. This is like even massive. down here, this plastic, it's just, yeah. just immediately coming off. On yeah, the exactly. Um, no, I, I think that from here up, everything is great. Uh, we're gonna get to this craziness in a second, but like th these aren't the upgraded seats. You can get even nicer leather, and you can get nicer leather on the headliner, like a suede kind of. But they right. have at least matched, like sometimes we get in vehicles and there's a different color of leather here. Yeah. A different color of leather, red leather, yellow leather. It's ten, ten times fast. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. And the, and the steering wheel is still jet black, like they haven't cared. This is the same chocolatey brown oh, as this. Oh, that's true. So that's matches. a good point, actually. Right, yeah. That's somewhere where they haven't skipped. And we've even got the polished wood on the steering wheel. Right, so it shows fingerprints. Okay, so this, I need to say, right off the bat, strong, strong statement. This is the best luxury infotainment on the market. I would agree. Right? I would agree. Like, it is absolutely I don't even care that it's fantastic. a curved OLED. I mean, I'm sure that contributes to it. But it's, I, I it's a big deal. It's but simple. It's intuitive. It, one of the things that I really like about it is that it doesn't feel like an afterthought stuck on Mercedes kind of vibe that they've been doing. This, like, section here is trimmed in leather, and it's built into this, and it curves, and it's, it's just kind of all beautifully done. And it's so easy to navigate, James. Every single thing about it. Well, first of all, obviously, you got the actual infotainment screen. And like, they, I will say that, that everything is kind of of the size for a person who might wear bifocals. Right. Um, but I really, really appreciate it. But still. it's far away. It's and far this away. This is a touchscreen, and even the little left one is a touchscreen. The whole thing, yeah. So this little section but here. But the middle bit's not there, right? Uh, no, it's not. This is. I mean, this is the touchscreen. Actually, this whole. I guess this one piece is a touchscreen because that's all one piece all the way over here. But I really like this because I can just select everything that's on my screen right now, right? So there is the river in front of me and then I can go to, that's the augmented reality camera. I, I respect camera. you for not naming it, for not even going as far to say that that stupid stream You mean the Thames? Is the Thames. <laughs> Where do they get off? You yeah, probably no one in Toronto would even try and do that. They thought it was cute to name it the Thames. It's like a little London. It's like a tiny version of where you grew up. Okay, <laughs> gauge. 
this is just nice and easy to read. Also, I have all the information laid out here and I can navigate through uh, with this stuff and, and change things here and there. Obviously, there's so much to go into. I really, really, really like this. And yet, somehow, despite all the touchscreens, mm -hmm. the climate controls are buttons. The heated seats are buttons. And it has cooled seats as well, right? But this is a perfect example of just putting a little bit of like thought into the design. You don't, people are afraid of buttons these days because they clutter things or whatever and everyone does everything in a touch screen. But this is a perfect example of how you make a whole series of usable buttons not intrusive to the design of the vehicle. It's perfectly integrated. No, I think they've nice, done a great job. They really, and we, really we have. And the CT5, obviously the CT5 didn't have this stuff. No, I no. really like the updated interior. No, and the steering wheel is nice, it feels good. It's high enough quality that I, that I will forgive the, the few foibles it has because of this amazing screen. But this has a really neat feature, and I'm going to send you now all the way to the very back of the car. It's quite a trek, pack a lunch. I don't like sitting in the back. Okay, when we sit in the back you go. of the Lincoln Navigator, uh -huh. I look like a nine-year-old kid yeah. going to yeah. soccer practice. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, off you go. The shorts didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, how you doing back there, I hurt buddy? My bum. Yeah, you good? Okay. Yeah. Um, um, now I look tiny again, and I feel small. Y'all ready to go to hockey practice or football? I didn't I guess? play hockey or football. Or what did you play? I did fencing, and then I did rugby. Rugby, that's actually pretty manly. That's I, I got cut from the rugby team. It if is. I'm being honest. I yeah. did minus it though, because I. I went home and had a central bath to nurse the bruises every time. <laughs> so I just threw my man card in. Oh my god. Okay. I was a, you know, second so, mode. well, I, I've had enough of you, so I'm going to take control of the Cadillac. I feel like I'm on a Disney ride. <laughs> and you'll see on your left, uh, I feel like I have to use a radio Don't announcer you just voice. Say the River Thames. <laughs> <laughs> it's the River Thames. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like I, uh, it's so weird. Isn't that weird? It's booming. So uh, this is the conversation enhancement mode. And what I, I have an off, a normal, and a high, and you're on high right now. To me up here, this does not sound any different. It is a localized speaker in the back seat. So I, I hear a slight echo because you're I hear your voice and then yes. I hear both. Yeah, so this is basically, if you're misbehaving in the back on the way to your football slash rugby slash soccer practice, whatever it is, cheerleading. I just go, cheerleading, hi, boom, what's up? You're in trouble, James. I'm in trouble. You're not getting McDonald's after practice. You can, have, you can have some orange slices, though. Orange slices are amazing. They are right? after you have to. It's like it's a no. It's that's a, a really good thing. So, but it doesn't fight the music, which comes through the AKG. Yes, sound but this doesn't have the thirty-six speaker. This is the nineteen. The nineteen speaker. And it's still yes. good. It's still good. Yeah. yeah, I'm comfortable back here. Honestly, uh, it's it's not like massively cushy. There's some jump seat vibe to it. Yes, and I will say that those seats right there are not nearly as fantastical as the X7. No, with the captain's chairs. With the captain's chairs. Those are just fine. They're not like amazing. But the leather quality feels pretty good. It's okay. It's just not that yeah. cush. No, it's not as soft. The X7 had like lazy boys in the middle. However, this is the ESV. So this has got the massive trunk behind the third row, which you don't right. get if you get the shorty. That's right. So this has a lot of the extra space and all of this stuff folds down like with push buttons and everything. And you have a ton of storage if you need it. And we have the big long- And this has the second screens. This has the extra. This has the extra screens, which are really neat. You can send a request to go to McDonald's to the driver. At which point, I can turn on my conversation enhancement and tell you, "No, we have McDonald's at home." Are you hungry? I, I could be. I could be. Yeah. Big Mac time. Yeah. Okay. So the 2021 Escalade then raises the bar and is the best Escalade yet. Its technology and features reign supreme in its class, even if its ride and engine don't. But more importantly for its buyers and true to its reputation, it is still the SUV that has an unmatched road presence, this side of a G-Class. And it's got cooled seats as well, actually. Yes, yeah, it does. There you go. Oh, they're powerful. Yeah? Oh. Okay, so Are you okay? I have a rip in my trousers, right where my crotch is, just found out. Really big, actually. <laughs> Let's just say I am experiencing these ventilator seats <laughs> in a light that they were never intended. I don't want to look. <laughs> don't look. No, why don't you look? Oh my God, James. That's, it's cold that's outside. Great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my seat.